get ready as we dive into all the rappers who've had beef with Drake. It's a long list, so let's get started. NBA Youngboy and Drake had some beef mainly because of Youngboy's issues with Lil Durk, who's tight with Drake. Youngboy felt a bit salty about Drake being friends with Durk and not wanting to work with him. And he said so in his song, Fuck the Industry Part 2. Then Jay Prince, who's a big deal in the rap world and close to Drake, stepped in. He set up a FaceTime call between Drake and Youngboy to sort things out. Jay Prince told them to chill and respect each other, saying it's better to move forward than to keep fighting. As you can see, I had a good time kicking it with the homies in Utah. On behalf of the little homie YB, me and my brother Birdman were able to have a real conversation face to face. We talked about the past, the present, and the future, but most importantly, we left each other with a mutual respect moving forward. Even though I wasn't there for a meeting with Birdman, I must say the Lord works in mysterious ways. With that being said, I must address the song where my name and Drake's name were mentioned. J. Cole, another famous rapper, also got dragged into this. He talked about the whole situation in a song on Drake's album for all the dogs, basically saying he's cool with young boy and people shouldn't believe everything they read online. You see this drama between Drake and Pusha T? It's like a soap opera with loads of twists. Way back in 2006, Pusha T's group, Clips, dropped a song called Mr. Me Too. People thought it was a sly dig at Lil Wayne for copying their style. And since Drake is Lil Wayne's buddy and label mate, he got dragged into this mess right from the start. Fast forward to 2011 and things start heating up. Pusha T's track, Don't Fuck With Me, had a bit of Drake's song in it and the lyrics seemed to be throwing shade at both Drake and Lil Wayne. Drake started sneaking in on some sly lines in his songs and boom, a lyrical tug of war began. Mention wedding ring like it's a bad thing. Your father walked away at five, hell of a dad thing. In 2012, Pusha T goes all in with Exodus 23-1 targeting Drake, Lil Wayne, and their record label. It was all about contracts and label drama, a straight up call out. Drake clapped back in 2013 with Tuscan Leather, tossing some shade at Pusha T. Plan to buy your most personal belongings when they up for auction. Man, truth be told, I think about it often, the petty king. But I can tell you, 2018 was when things exploded. Pusha T's infrared from his Daytona album reignited the ghostwriting rumors around Drake calling out Quentin Miller, who was rumored to have written for Drake. Drake fires back with Duppy Freestyle, aiming at Pusha T and Kanye West. And then the bombshell. Pusha T's The Story of Adidon, this wasn't just any track. It spilled major tea about Drake, including his secret son. And you're banned from Canada. I thought you was just saying that. Oh, say no, 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 I'm serious. And this is, this is all right, all right. How, did you, how did you know? How did you know you was banned? My manager over here told me. What, what happened? Yeah. Well, I, well, I, can Ye hit Donald <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna get into that, can, but can Ye I can't hit Donald know. Trump? Ye no, hit Donald. I didn't ask him to do nothing. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. Know. So you said, all right, let's just be clear. You said Now let's talk about Drake and Tyga. This beef started cooking in 2014, and it was a mix of snide comments and social media stunts. Tyga kicked things off in a Vibe interview, calling Drake fake. Drake's comeback? He kept it cool and subtle, throwing shade through social media. He started liking photos of Black China, Tyga's ex, on Instagram. What's, his, what's your favorite Tyga I don't, song? I don't know who that is. You want me to play you some Tyga right now? No. I'm about to. Their music became their battlefield. Drake's Six God and Tyga's Make It Work were like coded messages, each artist dissing the other without naming names. It's like they were talking to each other, but through their songs. But wait, there's more drama. Tyga's relationship with Kylie Jenner got everyone talking. And when Drake started liking Black China's posts, things got even messier. With social media posts from China, Jenner, and Drake, the drama just kept growing. Yeah, Tyga, on Twitter it sounds like you wanna fight Drake, bro. <laughs> Drake and Jay-Z, kind of like a younger and older brother in the music world, but things got a bit rocky in 2014. Drake said something in a Rolling Stone interview about Jay-Z's love for art references in his songs, calling it kind of corny. Jay-Z didn't take it too well. In his remix of We Made It, he hit back, calling Drake Mrs. Drizzy and standing up for his art shot. In disguise in the form of a fake The bar seeing me Watch for the traitors Drake, who's pretty slick with words, didn't just let that slide. In draft day, he threw in a line that seemed like a cheeky comeback at Jay-Z. The two kept at it, throwing playful jabs here and there. 
Drake even made a quip about Jay-Z eating fondue at a basketball game, and Jay-Z later called Drake as soft as a lacrosse team in a DJ Khaled track. But hey, this wasn't some big feud. It was more like a friendly competition. They still respected each other. Jay-Z even remixed Drake's KMT during a tour, and in 2018, they seemed to be on good terms again, even posing for a photo together. Now, let's talk about Drake and Tory Lanez. Their little rivalry started early in their careers, right in Toronto's hip-hop scene. Lanez was trying to get Drake's attention, even betting $10,000 that Drake would like his Play For Keeps mixtape, but Drake never bit, and that kind of sparked their rivalry. In 2010, Lane started dropping Drake's name, trying to hitch his wagon to Drake's rising star. By 2015, Lane was calling out Drake for using the six to refer to Toronto, saying it wasn't cool. This was a straight up challenge to Drake. In Canada, after Drake, it was me. I came second. Then it was the weekend and then there was party next door. But I wasn't as big. Absolutely. I remember I remember when you was heating up and you was going at Drizzy. Probably 2000, like yeah. 15 or 14. Yeah, yeah. It was it was just misguided energy. It, mm -hmm. was, it was misdirected energy. I think at the time I just wanted to be looked at as a certain at a certain tier because of my talent, and I wasn't being graceful with the let it happen. Yeah, I was like, nah, nigga, look at me, I'm nice, nigga. But that wasn't the way to go about it at the time. Partnerships, uh, things that kind of strayed away from me because people that didn't want to lose their relationship with the biggest artist yeah. in the game at the time, right. had to stay away, but it wasn't nothing that was that serious. You get what right. I'm saying? So, and, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, I've always been a fan of his music and, and as he's always been a fan of mine, no love loss, you know, it's my dope. 2016 was when things really heated up. Drake's Summer 16 had lines that seemed to poke at Lanes' new Toronto mixtape. Lanes fired back in his Uber Everywhere remix, taking shots at Drake's background. But then, in 2017, everything changed. Drake and Lanes called it quits on their feud, posting photos together on Instagram. So there was this big buzz about Drake and Eminem having a feud, right? But guess what? It was mostly just a big fuss over nothing. It all kicked off with a joke from DJ Abro Darden of Hot 97. And I told Drake that I heard the rumor was that Eminem was gonna gear up to come after him. He later admitted he was just kidding when he said Eminem might diss Drake. This little joke sent everyone, fans, social media, you name it, into a wild guessing game. Drake's reaction? He just laughed it off, saying he didn't think Eminem would do such a thing. But he also added that if Eminem did come at him, he'd be ready. This, of course, made everyone even more curious about a potential rap battle showdown. Then, things seemed to get a bit more intense when Joe Budden, part of Eminem's group Slaughterhouse, entered the picture. He had criticized Drake's album Views. I think that that kid on that album that I heard sounds real fucking uninspired. So people started thinking maybe there was some real tension brewing. But wait, here's the twist. The whole so-called feud came to a sudden stop when Eminem popped up at Drake's concert in Detroit. Eminem rocked the stage with Drake, showing nothing but respect. Drake is always going to be in my good graces because he did something for, for one of my daughters that I will never forget and he will always be in my graces with that and I like Drake. Now, about Drake and Joe Budden, their beef started in April 2016. Budden on his podcast wasn't too kind about Drake's fourth studio album, Views. He said it was uninspired and seemed to think that Drake's producer, 40, was outdoing Drake. Drake didn't take this lightly, and soon we had a full-blown musical back and forth. Drake threw the first punch with a mysterious Snapchat post, and then in his song 4PM in Calabasas, where he sneakily dissed Budden, Budden fired back with his diss track, making a murderer part one, aiming for Drake. But wait, there's more. During his Summer 16 tour, Drake made fun of Budden's song Pump It Up. We got that good energy going on. I should have brought Joe Button up here and let him do Pump It Up one time and like, pump, pump, pump it up. And just when you think it's over, in April 2020, Drake and Budden seemed to cool off a bit. Drake hopped onto Budden's Instagram Live, chatting about leaked songs and a possible interview. But hold on. The feud flared up again in July 2022, when Drake made fun of Pump It Up on Instagram. <laughs> Where else? Where else, Joey? Would you have him going so crazy? So, back in July 2015, Drake and Meek Mill had this huge spat. It all started when Meek Mill called out Drake on Twitter, accusing him of not writing his own raps. The big fuss was about Drake's verse on their song Rico from Meek Mill's album. 
This tweet set off a lot of chatter in the music world and had fans going wild on social media. Drake didn't say much at first, but then he hit back with a diss track called Charged Up. This song was like a subtle nudge at Meek Mill, addressing the ghostwriting accusations. But wait, there's more. Meek Mill wasn't just going to sit back. He called Drake's track Baby Lotion Soft. So what does Drake do? He drops another diss track, back to back, turning up the heat in their feud. Fast forward to 2018, and guess what? Drake and Meek Mill patched things up. They ended their beef at a concert in Boston, showing everyone they can move past their issues. This was a big deal in the rap world, kind of like a symbol of making peace and moving on. Now let's talk about Drake and Common. Their feud in 2011 and early 2012 had a bit of a twist. It turns out Common was kind of upset about Drake getting close with Serena Williams, who was Common's ex. This came out after they had already traded a few diss tracks. Make no mistake, I'm talking to Drake. Common opened up later, saying his feelings were partly because of Drake's thing with Serena. He admitted it might have been more about emotions than anything else, but it wasn't all about Serena. There was also some tension about respect between the two rappers. Eventually, Drake and Common sorted out their differences. They even showed up at events together, proving they were over their beef. As for Drake and Serena Williams, their relationship caught a lot of attention. Drake was often seen cheering for Serena at her tennis matches and even mentioned her in his songs. They became a hot topic especially after they were spotted together at a restaurant. But after their rumored fling ended, Serena married Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian in 2017. Yeah, and this was all during the year of the beef. I went to his his party he had, and people was walking around looking <laughs> like, like, like they ain't know, like, it, they ain't know. It's about to be autumn. Yeah, they was like, yo, what's going on? What are you doing here? This reminds me of the Tupac and Biggie debate. What is more important, substance or a good time. As a so, Drake and Kendrick Lamar's rivalry. It's more about clever wordplay and sneak disses than any big showdown. It all started with Kendrick Lamar's verse on Big Sean's 2013 track, Control. In it, Kendrick called out a bunch of rappers, including Drake, saying he wanted to be better than them. If Drake and Kendrick Lamar got in a rap battle, who you think would win? Gotta go with Kendrick. I think Drake is an outstanding entertainer, but Kendrick, his last Drake wasn't too happy about being named in the song. In a 2013 interview with Billboard, he brushed it off, saying it was just Kendrick being ambitious. But Drake made it clear he wasn't threatened by it. I, I always keep my ear out for, for, for the hardest shit. I have a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for, you know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm, Three-headed um, monster. Yeah, yeah. So I have a lot of respect for those guys because they also continue to you know, stay true to what we started started with um, and finding new ways to do it. Back and forth didn't stop there. Kendrick threw shade at Drake during his cypher at the BET Hip Hop Awards, calling him a sensitive rapper. This was a comeback to Drake's own subtle dig at Kendrick in his song, Language, where he critiqued Kendrick's style. But despite all this, they've shown respect for each other's skills. Drake acknowledged Kendrick's talent in the Vibe interview, and Kendrick has spoken highly of Drake's work too. Now let's talk about Drake and Ludacris. Their beef goes back to around 2010, all about rap styles. Drake once claimed he mastered the punchline rap flow, using a line from Ludacris' song, My Chick Bad, as an example of a not so great punchline. This rubbed Ludacris the wrong way, leading him to release Bada Boom, a diss track targeting Drake and Big Sean for copying his style. But this feud didn't turn into one of those epic hip hop battles. In 2012, Drake told Vibe that he thought Ludacris was just trying to use his fame. He, the hardest artist or the hardest dude, but when it's like, when you start messing with a man's family or you start messing with, with him, that's what I say in the record. It's like, you mess with me, you messing with my family. Right. And so I hate when people talk so tough on the microphone, but you see them in person and this happens all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. See them in person. It's like, oh, no, nah, you know, I ain't mean it like that. Or everything's all good. It's just all entertainment. No, it's not, it's not Fast anymore. forward to the 2017 Billboard Music Awards and things took a turn for the better. Drake, while accepting his award, gave a shout out to Ludacris, who was hosting. He said he's always been a fan of Ludacris, showing some love and respect. Turns out Ludacris and Drake had already chatted before the award show sorting things out. This moment showed Drake's preference for unity in the music scene. He's often talked about the importance of artists supporting each other, 
especially in his city. His girl at the time, with all due respect, was probably doing a little bit more than that. But that it's, a, it's a true story, and I think that's why he said that. And you know, people can respect this man for for being very honest on record. Yeah, he's very open. Yeah, and and it was a it was a chick in Toronto, and at the time I didn't even know that she was. You know, I <laughs> guess his, didn't know if he had. I didn't I didn't know Lewis what was going Mads on. Drake's but girl, man, my goodness. <laughs> It's not his fault. He didn't know. I know. I, I, there you have it. All the rappers who've clashed with Drake. Like this video and subscribe for more rap feuds. Who do you think won their beef with Drake? Comment your pick and let's discuss.